Can people really change? If you knew that your life depended on it, would you, could you change your life? At the beginning of 2011, I was a healthy, happy, 44-year-old mother of two grown-up young women. My husband and I were finally enjoying some time together, doing the things we'd planned out during the years when our kids were younger and required all of our attention. We both had busy, demanding jobs, but we were finding time to enjoy our active group of friends, some social occasions, motorcycle trips all across the country, all things that we had worked towards in our younger years. We had a nice home that we built for ourselves, and we both enjoyed very good health, going years without seeing a doctor for anything more than just a common cold. In February of 2011, I went in for a routine yearly exam and had my blood sugar taken for the first time. That first reading was 161. Over the weekend, it went so high that the meter stopped reading the number. My initial A1C was 7.6, with average being 4 to 6. I discovered that I had type 2 diabetes and that it ran in my family, and that three uncles and my grandfather had all died from complications to diabetes. I realized that I was going to have to change more about my life than just medicine could fix. The first thing I had to do was educate myself. I had to teach myself what type 2 diabetes is and how it works. Once I understood the mechanics of diabetes, it was time to do something about it. The first big shock for me was a normal weekly trip to the grocery store. I had to read the back of every single thing, nearly crying in the cereal aisle, then the cracker aisle, then the condiment aisle, and finally the snack aisle. I left the store in shock. What they say is so true, you really are supposed to eat around the edges of the store and avoid the middle like the plague. The number of carbs in most of our everyday foods is astounding. Now when I shop, my cart is usually divided into thirds. One third produce, one third meat, one third dairy. No chips, no desserts, no sweet drinks, no processed foods. I found several apps that help me when I'm grocery shopping and eating out and also apps that help me keep up with my exercise and my blood glucose levels. My husband has been my strongest ally. He's helped me figure it out and he supported me when everyone else got tired of me being different. He has praised and encouraged me and tried every single crazy recipe I've come up with. He revels in the new stronger me, the one who feels better, has more energy, looks like a million bucks, and will still be riding motorcycles with him when we retire. My friend Corey, likewise, has been a stalwart companion. He joined me in Zumba during that first month after I was diagnosed and has rarely missed a day of exercise since then. When the rest of our exercise group dropped off over time, we found a new group to join. If no one else is around, we turn the DVD player on in one of our classrooms and dance our carbs away. I still eat well. You'd be surprised how many people ask me for my recipes or cooking advice. People who don't care a thing about carbs. I post pictures of my recipes on Facebook because I like to encourage my friends to cook easy, healthy meals. There are a few websites that i found to help me plan my meals and help me figure out the nutritional information I need for my homemade creations. You just enter the recipe and hit calculate and it tells you how many carbs you have in each of your recipes. I wake up early every morning so that I'm able to start my day with a healthy breakfast. I figured out how to enjoy coffee. I have snacks just like everyone else. I'm just more careful about what I have. To control diabetes, you have to plan. I plan every meal, every snack, every day. I rely on good planning for dinner the night before so that I'll have leftovers for lunch every single day. We still go out to eat with our friends every Friday night. Eating out can be a big problem for a diabetic, but it's easy if you'll just learn some simple rules. Rule number one, eat meat. No sauce, no fried meat. Rule number two, eat vegetables. Again, no sauce, not fried. Rule number three, if you can avoid the white starches, order a sweet potato instead. Rule number four, drink water. Rule number five, Avoid alcohol. Don't drink much. 
And my favorite, rule number six, skip dessert, drink a nice coffee instead. I look at my life now, a year later, and sometimes I don't recognize it. But other times I realize that I haven't changed that much. I've only changed some of my habits. My life is full of fresh foods, very few processed foods, lots of exercise, and I practice making good eating decisions every day. Most people notice my outward change in appearance first since I lost 35 pounds in the first five months. But more than looking good, I feel good all the time. I really don't know what my average daily blood sugar is now. I don't take it as often as I used to. But at my last doctor's visit, my A1C was 4.9. can change your life if you want it badly enough. It just takes motivation, determination, and perseverance. You have to be willing to stick to your decisions even when people around you encourage you to take the night off or reward yourself. You have to decide that a healthy life is much more important than a piece of cake or a can of coke.